the number of the people on Earth has just surpassed 8 billion. And it's predicted that during the next several decades the population will reach 9 billion, which is 4 times more than it was 100 years ago. The difficulty of providing everyone with the fundamental requirements of food is growing every year as that increasing number of people. In reality, according to the United Nations, a number of crises have caused global food insecurity to reach new peaks and the situation is only seen to get worse. Yet with the assistance of science, particularly recent advancements in gene editing technology, we may lessen the impact of contributing variables like plague, droughts and climate change, helping to feed mankind even as our population continues to grow. We need to remember that the over the same 100 years that the world's population increased by 6 billion, the world's poverty also decreased. Two thirds of the world population, or 1.35 billion people, were living in severe poverty in 1929. By 2015, that figure had decreased to 734 million, or around 10% of the world's population. 9.8% of the world's population was considered malnourished in 2019, a number that, although still too high, shows enormous progress. At first glance, these facts don't seem to make sense. In a planet with limited resources, how is it possible for the population to double twice when there's less hunger and poverty? Yet that's precisely what's occurred, and it's owing to human capacity to grow better at what we do. The Green Revolution of the 20th century, during which new innovations and procedures exponentially enhance food yields, which was brought about by scientists and innovators. Synthetic nitrogen, a chemical essential for plant development, was created in 1909 by two German chemists. Farmers now had limitless access to less expensive resources that were concentrated at high levels, as opposed to just depending on manure and dead plants to feed crops nitrogen. Later in the century, American farmer Norman Borag worked years creating a new wheat strain to regulate stem height. The stems were becoming too long from the better fertilization and heavier grains were knocking off the plant before harvest. This led in the 1960s to the wheat breed's yield having quadrupled. Borag used the same breeding method on rice and was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for it. And now the most recent phase of the Green Revolution is underway. This time, it's how we build crops genetic code to select for advantageous traits rather than what we add to crops. Think about drought, particularly in the light of changing climate. Long-term water sources will prevent adequate crops from being produced to feed the local population. By using the gene editing technique CRISPR, which allows for the cut and paste of individual genes, researchers have inserted or removed genes to make crops like maize and tomatoes less water dependent and more resistant to arid climate. The selective breeding methods that Borag spent decades perfecting may be accelerated by the use of CRISPR. For instance, a recent science researcher found that removing only one gene from rice and corn can boost yields by 10%, and you may start to enjoy the advantages after only one growing season. 8 billion is a lot of people to feed. However, by using gene editing and other cutting-edge agricultural technology, we'll be able to guarantee that everyone on Earth has enough to eat.